As we begin another thought for the week, I want to read some words from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians and chapter 5. Be joyful always, he says. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. And may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. It's not always easy to give thanks, is it? Especially maybe in the present circumstances. Here we are, another week of lockdown has passed. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I find it hard enough knowing which day of the week it is. Never mind how many weeks we've had since we were first told to put these restrictions into place. Now, today it's been announced uh, that we're going to have another three weeks of it. I heard one scientific advisor say today that social distancing may have to be retained until a vaccine is found, which could be up to another year or more. So, as there's no sign of us getting back to meeting together in our congregations, you'll just have to make do with me on these little video presentations. The advantage is, of course, unlike in church, you can always just fast forward to the end. We've never experienced anything like this. So it's been said, a worldwide death toll now exceeding two million. But you know, pandemics like this caused by the coronavirus are actually nothing new. It's reckoned that between 2005 and 2012, AIDS killed up to 35 million people worldwide. The Hong Kong flu pandemic of 1986 killed 4 million. The Asian flu of 5658, 2 million. And worst of all, in the 20th century, the Spanish flu, the end of the First World War, 1918, it may have killed up to 50 million people worldwide. Throughout history, there have been devastating pandemics. The bubonic plague that ravaged between 1346 and 1353, we often call the Black Death, may have accounted for up to 200 million deaths worldwide. An earlier bubonic plague in 541 decimated the population of Europe by half, with 50 million deaths. While these statistics may be interesting, behind them is, of course, untold suffering, as well as grief for those who have lost loved ones. And we sympathise with those who are in that position today. During the 17th century, much of Europe was affected by the Thirty Years' War raged from about 1618 to 1648. During this grim time, Martin Rinkart was a Lutheran pastor in his native town of Eilenberg in Saxony. This little walled town became a refuge for hungry and homeless people from the locality. They had been devastated by the invading Swedish army and in 1637 a plague struck the town. Eight thousand of the inhabitants died, including a large number of children and all but three of the town council. One by one the various clergy of the town fell victims of the plague, until only Parton Rinkart was left. It is said that he conducted 4,480 funerals, sometimes doing as many as 40 to 50 a day, and one of them was that of his own wife. A severe famine followed and Martin did what he could to help those in need. He sold what he had, he mortgaged his future income and kept only minimum rations for his own family. When the commander of the invading army demanded an exorbitant ransom from the town, Martin acted as an intermediary. When his request for clemency was rejected, he turned to the townsfolk and said, Come, my children, we can find no mercy with man. Let us take refuge with God. And on his knees, he led the people in prayer to God. The story is that the Swedish commander was so impressed, he reduced the levy on the town to just a small sum. In spite of everything that had happened to him, Martin Rinkart was able to write a hymn 
which we often sing and one which I believe can resonate with us strongly today. When we feel that things in our lives are out of control, when we've been shaken out of our comfortable routines, when the future looks all too uncertain, can we say as Martin Rinkard did, now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices, such wonders he has done. In him the world rejoices, who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. The call of Martin's hymn is to all of us to thank God, whoever we are, wherever we may be, and whatever our circumstances. Of course, this will not always be easy, especially when things are difficult for us, as they are now. And if you think about it, it certainly would not have been easy for Martin in his day. But it's what Paul has called Christians to do in 1 Thessalonians and also in Ephesians 5.20 where he says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And in his hymn, Martin shows us how we're to give thanks with our hearts, not superficially, but from the very depths of our being with our hands in practical ways, in everyday actions and activities, and with our voices, in our words, and of course in our songs of praise and worship. And the second half of the stanza tells us why. Throughout all of our life we are in God's hands, so regardless of what exhausting and seemingly hopeless circumstances we may face, we can take heart and thank God that His countless gifts of love are truly still ours today through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Second verse of the hymn acknowledges that we continually need God's help and we certainly do so it is a prayer for today. So may this generous God through all our life be near us to fill our hearts with joy and with his peace to cheer us to keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed, to free us from all ills in this world and the next. And you know, if we have known the boundless generosity and grace of God in saving us from our sins, then we have this assurance of his presence with us. And so we can face whatever comes without anxiety or fear. Two of God's most precious gifts are mentioned here. Hearts filled with joy and blessed with peace. And because of these, God will keep us in his grace. He will guide us when we're perplexed and when we don't know what to do. Of course, there will be ills from which we may not be spared in this world. But the great promise is, that we shall indeed be free from them all in the world to come. That's our hope, our great, sure and certain hope. That's what promised to us in Revelation 21, 4 to 5, where God says he will wipe away every tear. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. And so despite everything that this world throws at us, despite coronavirus and COVID-19, despite the death and misery it is bringing, and even despite the little discomforts and inconveniences we all are experiencing in lockdown, surely we can say with Martin Rinkart in the final verse of his hymn, all praise and thanks to God who reigns in highest heaven to Father and to Son and Spirit now be given, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for so it was, is now, and shall be evermore. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, we thank you for this gracious promise that you have given us that we put our faith and trust in you, you take away our sins. 
and you heal all our diseases. Oh, in this world we are never promised that we will be free from them. But we thank you for the great and glorious promise that one day in heaven there will be no more mourning or weeping and no more death. But Lord, in the meantime, we are in this world. And so we pray for your help, your promised help to be with us as we go through all the perplexities of this life. Lord, we pray for those who are being affected by coronavirus and COVID-19 at the moment. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones and who haven't even been able to be with them or say a final farewell. Lord, we pray for our National Health Service, for the staff there who are doing such a wonderful job. We pray for safety for them. We pray for scientists and others who are looking for a vaccine that may prevent this illness coming back again. We pray for our government, for Prime Minister, for his recovery, for those who are leading us at Stormont and in Westminster. Pray for wisdom for them. And Lord, we pray for ourselves, though we are scattered in our own homes and unable to come together, yet we know that we have a sense of your gracious presence with us. So Lord, we give you our thanks now and say all praise and thanks to God who reigns in highest heaven, to Father, to Son and Spirit now be given, the one eternal God, whom earth and heaven adore, for so it was, is now, shall be evermore. Amen. See